So just a little background, we, were, we presented a paper called Unplugged Research Goes Mobile at the 2011 Australian Market and Social Research Conference. Um, at that time, we were talking a lot about how uh, we did a case study about how mobile results differ from online desktop results. Since that time, there's been some changes in, in even how vision critical approaches mobile. We've built our mobile platform. So today, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, of course, we won't highlight that too much and try not to name drop too much. But um, And then we'll also want to wrap up with some case studies. Some of these are things we've we've done with other with our clients, some are things we've talked in a, um, in a pitch type situation, and some are just brainstorm of how we can use mobile. Okay, thanks, Sean. So I'll just start by giving you guys some background information. Um, so it's been estimated that by 2015, 62% of mobile phones will be smart. Um, overall, mobile traffic has increased four times since 2008. Um, right now, about 15% of Google searches are conducted via mobile, and that doesn't even really take into consideration the growth of tablet computers over the last year or so. So just a little bit on the evolution of, of mobile research. So this start, I think the, the first four end of mobile research would have been um, SMS-based research, but this had its limitations in that you know, it's very simple, one, one question, very simple responses, and very unforgiving. Uh, then there was a, a period of using mobile devices to, for intercept interviewing, to disintercept interviewing. And this is still happening, of course. But now we've reached uh, a tipping point where we need to put, where we're putting the surveys in respondents' hands in their own mobile devices on their own terms. Uh, so we have to jump in at this and adopt to this, but there will be some challenges ahead. So the thing with mobile is that um, it's a lot more complicated than desktop computers because there's just a sheer, there's a huge number of different devices out there, um, probably over 6,500 different web-enabled devices. And what that means is that there are many different operating systems and different browsers that are being um, used on these different devices. There's also different input modalities, so with a computer it's all done through your keyboard and mouse, but on phones some are touch screen, some have pretty keyboards, and some have stylus and pens. Um, another big challenge is the screen size, so imagine trying to optimize an image or a question or a mobile website on a mobile phone. When you're dealing with different devices with different screen sizes, that can be a big challenge. And also, there's just a lack of support for certain software. So on iPhones, Flash or JavaScript may not necessarily be supported, which means that um, you're going to run into some problems. So at Vision Critical, we've come up with some best practices for mobile. Um, this is just from our own experience and from some of the research on research that we've done. Um, one of the things that we recommend doing is just to be aware of the screen space and maximize that. So what that means is that you know if you don't have a big banner take up half of the screen on a mobile phone because you only have limited real estate to work with on a screen as it is. We also recommend that you profile your panel for smartphone ownership. That way you can control um, in your sampling who gets set certain things. Um, and then you can also estimate how many people potentially complete a survey or a task by a mobile device. Um, get familiar with the software that you're using. So at Vision Critical we have a, a software called Spark that we use. Um, so make sure that you understand what devices are supported by the software and um, plan accordingly. Also be aware of the question types and build skips. So if you have the ability to detect whether or not someone is completing a survey, this is when you're doing multimodal studies. Um, so if you know someone's doing a survey via a mobile device or via a desktop, you can maybe build skips accordingly so that um, you optimize the version of the question that is shown, depending on the device that they're using. Um, we also recommend to keep the length of the survey short. Now, that goes you know, for not just mobile research, but for general for online research as well. But I think this is even more important on a mobile device where um, some people may just use mobile phones as a distraction when they have a few minutes of extra downtime. They may not necessarily want to stand there for 20 minutes doing a survey on a phone. 
And then finally to QA for both mobile and desktop. So what that means is just to make sure that you've tested your questions and your survey and you're happy with how it shows up on both mobile and desktop. So where does that leave us today? Well, basically there are two main vehicles for conducting mobile research at the moment. Um, there are either web-based solutions or app-based solutions. So with web-based solutions, what that means is that um, you're accessing the survey via an internet browser on a mobile device. And this is, um, I guess the benefit of this is it can be multimodal, which means someone can do it from a desktop or from a phone. And then there are app-based solutions, which um, involves getting the respondent to download an app and then install it into their phone. And then they access future surveys through that app. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we have a software called Spark, and um, since October of last year, we added a mobile module to that. And what that means is it allows an author, a survey author, to um, create surveys with basically the um, a click of a button that are optimized for mobile and desktops. Um, and it essentially allows us to create um, different questions and the software optimizes those questions for mobile viewing and optimizes for how a responder would interact with um, that question on a mobile device. Um, and from the respondent's perspective, it's a seamless experience. So whether they do the survey via a desktop or via a phone, um, the, the software just detects what they're accessing from and just renders the survey appropriately for their device. Um, and since that time, we've seen that about a quarter of all our clients have enabled mobile survey rendering. And we're seeing um, completion rates from a mobile device of anywhere from 10% to 50%, depending on um, the, the panel that we're dealing with. Great. Thanks, Ying. So we believe that there's a lot of benefit for respondents. And you know, we, we depend on respondents as an industry to keep us, keep us going and provide us with data. So we believe they have a lot to benefit through this uh, new channel and multi-mode, uh, allowing mobile to fit in there. One is it's more convenient. It allows them to take advantage of, of downtime rather than to only complete surveys when they're near their phone in a telephone sense or near a computer in a, in a traditional online sense. It provides a better user experience. At the time that we presented our paper at AMSRIS, we, we didn't have our platform built yet, and we were noticing that approximately 10% of people were trying to complete a, our surveys that were optimized for a, a desktop computer by their mobile devices. So allowing creating a platform which is optimized for a mobile device provides a better user experience for them. As other presenters have talked about, Certainly, the, it makes it easier for respondents to be able to recall their behavior as they're, allowed to, as they're able to complete the survey in situation. And it's more engaging. I can speak for myself that you know, I'm, I'm in some ways almost addicted to my mobile phone. And as people, we are tending to use our mobile devices more often. So um, there must be some engaging component to the convenience of our mobile devices. So what's in, a, in it for us as researchers? I think the picture over there to the, the left will show um, a few of these demonstrates a be better response rates. Uh, so again, this is flipped to the what, how respondents benefit to take advantage of downtime, as this young fellow is. Uh, with, so that gives us better response rates. More timely data, um, if we were talking about a Toilet seat cushion, in this case, uh, it would be more, more timely data. And a new audience. So we all know that mobile, uh, we know from other research that mobile smartphone owners tend to be younger. And it's an, it's an audience that we as a research industry have struggled to, uh, to talk to. I've always found it difficult to talk to. So this opens up a new, a new audience. And as the focus of this uh, new MR conference is about, or today's session is about, is about, about new capabilities. So what we're going to talk about for the rest of our presentation is creative applications. And as I said in the beginning, some of these are ones that we have conducted with clients. Some are ones that we've discussed about how we could use mobile um, in an approach to address the research need. And some are just where we see 
research could be of, of use. So the first one is a series of situation-based tasks, which uh, Ying will talk us through. So um, we had a client who were, they, the client was from the travel agency industry, and they were interested in recruiting some participants to trial an app for them. Um, and so we did that. We sent out a survey and recruited participants. And um, I guess the challenge of that was that um, travelers may not necessarily always have a computer with them when they're traveling, and they also may not have access to internet cafes to regularly get online. So um, what we did was set up a series of tasks and questions that were mobile optimized, because most people travel with their phone. It's something that kind of just goes with you wherever you go. And so respondents were able to complete the tasks and complete the follow-up questions via their mobile phone. Um, and this just basically allowed us to get um, some data that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to collect. The second example um, is location-specific research. So um, in this case, an airport in Canada was um, interested in, so they had recently done some upgrades and renovations, and they were interested in getting some feedback. That was the situation. Um, but the challenge was that they were dealing with a transient population, and they really had no way of contacting these people who were passing through the airport or knowing who these people were. So what they did was they put up signage um, at various locations throughout the airport, and on the sign they had an image of a QR code. Um, and so people passing by would be able to take a photo of the QR code through their phones through a QR code reader, which then directed them to a survey, which then asked about you know what they thought of the recent changes in the, in the, in the airport or just general feedback. Um, and what was interesting was the first time they did this, I think the call to action on the file wasn't as strong. So then um, in the second round, they changed the call to action and actually got up a much better response rate. Now, this is actually um, really good for other situations as well. So another example that we came up with was um, potentially a retailer, such as Zara, um, could add a QR code to different pieces of clothing that they carry. And that way shoppers, um, when they're trying on the clothes in the store, can then scan the code through their phone and provide feedback on the piece of clothing or the you know, blazer or the jacket or whatever it may be. Um, and then that allows the retailer to get really granular insights onto the styles and the, the clothing that they've um, designed for the season. Okay. So a lot of my background in research is in customer satisfaction. And I been across many situations where, you know, for the case, this case today we'll talk about an airline, but pre or post flight evaluation of customer satisfaction, either overall or with specific aspects of a flight, um, needs to be evaluated. The challenge here is that the, the population is obviously on the go, literally, and they're time, it's a time sensitive topic, so you may not remember the the experience a couple days later. Personally, I get uh, feedback surveys from our, our business travel company two or three days after. I actually just got a reminder as I was preparing for this today. And you know, about a travel, about a flight I took a week ago. So I don't remember every the ins and outs of that experience. The solution is um, a mobile survey sent to customers immediately before or after the flight. This addresses the issue of the time sensitivity, it provides timely data, and it targets respondents in situation. Um, there's many different ways that this mobile survey could be delivered, but providing a survey on the mobile device right then and there will, will help to address some of the challenges. The next one is geolocation technology. So the solution here is a is lo location specific feedback is required. Um, at an event, say a concert or something with a, a transient population. The challenge here is that there's too many unknowns to target uh, via email or traditional special means as well that can benefit from, from timely data. So the solution is using uh, geolocation technology to target people that enter into a certain radius of the, the focal point. Um, at the moment, this is only available through an application, so you can't 
can't use a web-based solution to target people. They need to be a member of something which you, allows you to target them. So they would need to be a member of an application which they've signed up for to push them a notification that there's a survey available about the event that they're on. This allows you to target people in situation at an event. Um, this example is actually one um, that we recently went through here. So um, we had a client who was looking to recruit a community pal of smartphone users. Um, now, the challenge was that we wanted to essentially make the experience as easy and seamless and intuitive as possible for potential members to sign up and join to become part of the community. Um, so what we did was we optimized our, our initial recruitment survey to ensure that respondents could complete via a desktop and via a mobile phone. And we were also just interested in seeing how many people would actually complete the survey from their mobile device. Um, and it was a, a big success, actually. We got a lot of um, members on the panel. And since that time, we've been seeing response rates of about 30% um, on mobile devices, which was higher than we were even expecting. OK, we just have two more examples here. The, um this one is a mobile website evaluation. So the situation here is the assessment of a mobile optimized website is required. If you're not familiar with a mobile website, uh, if you look to the left, there's a picture. Many companies now are offering an optimized version of their website for mobile devices. The challenge is moving respondents. Uh, it's funny that now the challenge is the other way. We're moving respondents from mobile to online to a desktop and back is awkward and not ideal for this task completion. So what we can do is, is interrupt them in some way while they're on their mobile device and ask them to complete the survey right there on their mobile device, the same device that they're viewing the mobile website from, uh, via a pop-up screen uh, or a feedback link on the, on the mobile website. Another example is multimedia data collection. So this is similar to a previous presentation. We needed images of real-life situations. Um, when events are occurring, so for example at a sports game. The challenge here is next day recall, recall of events can be inaccurate. Um, this can be exacerbated when there's, when there's alcohol involved at those events. And so we do, we have a couple of um, alcohol clients here. So um, the solution here is we can instruct respondents to take photos ahead of time. So you give them the task ahead of time, provide them with an email address or some way of communicating photos back to a forum or, or some survey response system. And then so they can submit their what they consumed or was available or what they noticed in an event. And further to this, these images can be used at a later time to follow up the next day to prompt their recall and to help them um, remember certain situations or scenarios they found themselves at during the event. So I hope that throughout our presentation today, um, we help to confirm what you likely see all around you, that's that the, the world is going mobile, and, and more importantly, that we as a research industry embrace and adapt to this creativity, uh, creatively and adopt to, you know, to take advantage of all the opportunities that it presents us with. Thank you, and we'll stick around for some questions. <laughs>